people of Zion. The Lord will come to save all nations and your hearts will exult to hear his majestic voice. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is the second Sunday of Advent and our theme is the good news. Uh, during the sermon slot this morning I'll give the um, annual rector's report and then when we come to announcements that will be our vested secretary Nick doing um, AGM bits. Almighty God to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light things now hidden in darkness, and will disclose the secret purposes of the heart. So, let us open our hearts and prepare for his coming in word and sacrament by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. So we confess. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, Christ, have Lord, have Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins. Time to amend your lives and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. The Collect for Advent 2. Almighty God, who sent your servant John the Baptist to prepare your people to welcome the Messiah, inspire us, the ministers and stewards of your truth, to turn our disobedient hearts to you, that when the Christ shall come again to be our judge, we may stand with confidence before his glory, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. 
The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm, 185, Psalm 85 and the response is, Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. He is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him that his glory may dwell in our land. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteous and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. The second reading is a reading from the second letter of Peter, chapter 3. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot, or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to Christ our Saviour. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. He thanks the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. Joel, oh, please sit. Rector's annual report. In my opening paragraph of last year's Rector's report, I raised the issue of constitutional matters, Brexit and independence, and wondered what might have changed in 12 months' time. Words like COVID or pandemic wouldn't have been part of our everyday language. How things have changed. Leaving the EU is certainly in the air, like at the end of this month, but frankly nothing compared to C19. Will we be able to celebrate Christmas? It's a pressure issue for some. I have a little bit more light on that now. It has been an extraordinary year, and the first thing I want to say is how well St Michael's has adjusted to this current new norm. Given all the changes, and there have been many, not once has someone complained to me about the way we are now doing things at St Michael's. I think that's impressive. There's an openness, graciousness and acknowledgement that we're all trying to do the best we can in this church in very challenging circumstances. Earlier this year, at the end of March, our normal pattern of worship came to an abrupt halt. Not only did our public worship stop, we were told to close our doors. That went against every fibre of my being completely unable to offer a sanctuary to the community at a time where people would have particularly appreciated it. The only positive I could take from our predicament is that clergy were able to continue to pray in their church, this side of the border, unlike our brothers and sisters down south. So every Sunday during lockdown, I rang our bells and Anna and I celebrated the Eucharist at Trinity Chapel. Prayers never ceased in St Michael's, and the Aubrey candle continued to burn 24-7. This continued until the summer, when things began to loosen, and Anna had the excellent idea that we could meet outdoors on a Sunday afternoon in one another's gardens for the month of August. This worked extremely well. And even on one Sunday afternoon, when it's particularly dreek, people turned up anyway in good spirits to be together. 
By this stage, we were open for private prayer. This was greatly enhanced by Andrew and Barbara, Barbara playing the organ and Joan playing the piano. It was lovely to hear music once again in St Michael's. These Tuesday mornings for individual devotion prepared us for public worship at the end of August. We were far from normal, and frankly still aren't, with no choir and numbers capped at 50 by the Scottish Government. However, we are back and having started on Sunday mornings at 10.30, we then returned to having a midweek Eucharist but had to move it to Wednesday morning in the nave. Two changes to help with our health and safety regulations. This is where we are now, having 50% of our weekly services running and another idea from Anna, to add a seated exercise class after Wednesday Eucharist to help us physically, emotionally and mentally. The stress caused by isolation is huge. Fifteen chairs in the upper hall with participants socially distance. Twenty minutes of exercise with a video from Trish who specialises in ageing well recreation. This has helped great with building confidence and numerous people have commented on how much they benefit from the exercise. I'd like to comment that this gradual build-up of returning to normality has worked well. Safety has always been paramount, but we've tried to make the most of what we're permitted to do. I am aware that there is still concern and some don't wish, wish to risk being inside a building gathered together. We all long for a vaccine when we're able to return to what we consider the normal way of doing things at St Michael's. But for the time being we continue with our present format and I for one am grateful that we can gather at all. running with the impact of COVID for the moment. Unfortunately, with the link we had with St Peter's Anglican Church in Lilongwe, I couldn't see how we were able to develop this without meeting face to face. I was given a grant by the province to fly to Lilongwe and an earmarked a couple of weeks in July this year to visit St Peter's and spend some time getting to know their priest, Francis Matumba, and the people of the parish. It transpired as time passed that this was not going to happen and I returned the grant to the province. It's the first time I've ever done that by the way. <laughs> Particularly with no internet connection, virtually none between ourselves and St Peter's. Without actually meeting them it is really very difficult to give the link momentum. Not being safe to travel and the air industry in turmoil result in more expensive airfares, it was time to draw stumps. However, what has worked very well was another venture, also in the capital city of Malawi, Lilongwe, supporting the charity Building Malawi. In the vast 22 acre site, the library building now has a large plaque, Helensborough House Staff Room, that's the name. You will see a picture of it at the back of the church. Underneath the heading it reads, quote, with special thanks to Ray Mackay and the Rotary Club of Helensborough, Reverend Domin, the Congregation of St Michael and All Angels Scottish Episcopal Church. Frankly, job well done and I particularly appreciate the partnership with the Rotary. This is exactly the sort of creative initiative we should be doing, coming together to serve those in need, and in this case, from the poorest countries in the world. Changing tack. I'd like to acknowledge those who have given wonderful service to St Michael's, but have now stood down. Let me start with Joan Sadden, who's done no less than three decades as Chief Sacristan. Now that is a long time to volunteer for anything, 
I think the average for people to volunteer is about two years across the board in the voluntary sector. So I think 30 years. So 30 years, week in, week out. Often or not in life, it's attention to detail, one of my favourites, attention to detail, getting the small things right. Joan does this par excellence. We have a good collection of silver at St Michael's and we try to use it not just kept hidden away at the back of the safe. Joan has had overall responsibility for that as well, and of course, uh, the linen and the fabulous altar frontals we have. It's real behind the scenes work, and my goodness, it matters. We take it for granted that we have pristine vessels on the altar each week. That's work. And it's those sorts of detail which greatly enhance our worship. Thank you, Joan, and indeed John. It's much appreciated that you will continue with the laundering of the services, purificators, etc. Carol Parry is now Chief Sacristan. Thanks to her and, of course, Nick for taking this role on. I'm very pleased to say that the flower convenient position has finally been resolved. It took us a little while to sort this satisfactorily, but now Sue Ashby is able to stand down and be replaced by Andrea Gibson. Thank you very much, Sue, for doing this job for the last six years, and to Andrea for taking on this role. Rather like what I was saying with the Eucharistic vessels, Attention applied to the flower displays makes a real difference and helps lift people as we bring some of God's natural creation into church. On enjoying God's creation, the Rambling Club has been seriously curtailed this year. John Hanks has been the contact person for this. There are, of course, others who take on responsibility of leading the respective days. John serves in numerous ways in St Michael's and very much the wider community as well. For John, this is one role among many. Thank you, John, for your contribution to the Rambling Club and thanks to Jerry Quickfall, who has now taken over from John. Moving now to the vestry. Two members are retiring, Jane Davis and David Ronald. They both had military backgrounds, Navy and Army, respectively. So they brought a no-nonsense, down-to-earth approach to our vestry discussions. Your contributions have been valued. Thank you to you both. I'm pleased to say that Jane will continue with the important role of stewardship convener and will remain as the secretary's secretary. Speaking of which, takes me to Nick. I've been fortunate over the years to have had good vestry secretaries, and Nick is no exception, indeed one of the best. Nick is vigorous in carrying out his role as secretary to the vestry, and I'm most grateful for his professional approach, and not least his humour, invariably important. I'm also indebted to Yanina, our treasurer, another person who operates in the most professional manner, the system for payments now is well organised. You're blessed with a treasurer who is fast and efficient. Money matters, and how we manage it is really important. With Yanina, we know we are in very capable hands. Yet another good year work with Kevin, and both of us having rapidly adjusted to this new way of doing worship. We both like to be well organised and these change with Covid has certainly made long-term planning difficult to say the least. I think we born this well. We continue to deliver worship as best we can. Kevin remains as hard working and diligent as ever and I think it says so much about Kevin that he will produce sermon notes for evening prayer which I know is enjoyed by various people, certainly our choir members. In thanking Kevin, I always like to mention Joy, 
I appreciate Kevin is the lay reader, but many of us know how much joy does, and we witness that every week at our Wednesday morning Eucharist. Another one of the key jobs has been property convener, and I'm most grateful to Ray for continuing with this role. Ray is a good background for this, transferable skills from boats to buildings. Living around the corner also helps, it's that type of job. This is a sizable plant, quite a big church, two halls and a large rectory, most of which is over 150 years old. We have a challenging climate in Helensbury, if you hadn't noticed. Fourth Road Bridge comes to mind. Maintenance is relentless. We strive to keep our building in good shape, and preventative work is the key. Although the vestry is overall responsibility of the fabric, part of the trustee's role, on a day-to-day -day basis it tends to be Ray. Thank you, Ray, for all you do. Some serious multitasking, which as a congregation, we reap the benefit. Also thanks to Jean, who often or not is there assisting. With the plant, I'd like to mention the outside of it, specifically the flower tubs. Chris and Linda looked after tubs for six years or so and have asked for someone else to take on the responsibility of maintaining them. Jerry has kindly stepped up to the plate, as has Joe Scott. Nick has provided three new tubs and Ray one, so Jerry and Joe are now in a position to tend the tubs. Not all being new, but most. In fact, we did that last week, going round to have four, four new tubs there. I'd like to mention our two Richards, who have been working extremely hard with the building as well, primarily with microphones and cameras. Many thanks to you both for all you do for St Michael's, not least to Richard Smith for producing the weekly service sheets and Richard Harrell for leading the Mother's Union. Very grateful to Maureen Kyle for agreeing to take in on the other parts of outside the church, checking once a month or so when the occasion arises, rallying the troops, that's you and I, and uh, we can then blitz it. It should only be necessary a few times a year, but it's simply about keeping on top of things. I can't stress enough how important it is that our plant looks well cared for on the outside around the church. And the path down the back running parallel to the burn, two halls, the rectory, and rectory garden. The reality is many people do judge a book by its cover, even though we're told not to, but that's what people do. For us to attract people to our church, the cover needs to look good, and it's one of a whole. This entire corner of William Street and Princess Street should say to anyone passing, they care about what they do in that church, and are prepared to invest time, money, and energy into their buildings. The initial impression matters. Let's continue to work hard, keeping that right. I'd like to say something about our music, which is a key part of what we offer. St Michael's has a strong choral tradition. It's an integral part of the way we worship. At the moment, we are unable to do that. It's quite a blow. We are extremely blessed to have Andrew and Barbara, who have been playing um, on a Sunday morning since the end of August. How we've enjoyed their music, especially as we, we can't join in. We have now introduced cantors. They stand behind a screen and sing for us, sometimes as solos, duets, and indeed we have one quartet. We are making the most of what we are permitted to do, and the combination of our organists and cantors has made such a difference. We'll continue with this until the choir is allowed to return. On a very positive note, we do have new members of the choir waiting in the wings, ready for the turn of choral music. 
Also last week, we spent Sean's generous legacy in giving the organ overhaul. All in all, we are set to continue the great musical tradition of this church, and we can look forward confidently to 2021. So Harrison and Harrison came up from Durham. They're pretty much the best you can get. Um, and they overhauled the organ. They cleaned it top to bottom. Um, we get a little general tuning on Thursday, uh, and that should be at, uh, should be us a good, a very fine organ, uh, greatly enhanced uh, with with that overhaul. So money extremely well spent. A few words about my own ministry after approximately two and a half years as your rector. One plus with a pandemic is that I've not been rushing about quite as much as I normally do, and consequently I've had opportunities to be with members of the congregation, mainly in their gardens, and have generally got to know people better. As priest and pastor, this has been invaluable. One's priestcraft at the altar is strongly connected to the people you are called to serve. The quality of the relationships within the community influences the quality of the liturgy in the worship. For me, 2020 has been a very good year to develop these connections and an opportunity to strengthen pastoral care amongst you. As you know, I've been interim priest in charge of Dumbarton and Alexandria. This has been quite demanding, not least this year with funerals. Recently, I've had a run of funerals from Alexandria. Sadly, at St Mungo's, at some point next year, the church will be deconsecrated. It's not just about finance. There are very few healthy people to actually be trustees, simply don't have the office holders. And so what has happened, in fact, last week, 1st of December, and the diocese now runs St Mungo's, um, so that's, that responsibility is taken away from the trustees, from the vestry, so it's run by the diocese. The diocese synod in March, it will go forward to close St Mungo's. There will be a final service led by the bishop in Eastertide, um, and then that will, that will conclude um, St Mungo's at Alexandria. I'm pleased to say that the rector of St Augustine's, uh, the, the, the store at St Augustine's is brighter. Since the end of October, they have a new rector, and I suspect next year, the able-bodied members of St Mungo's will make their way to St Augustine's. As that develops, my role will gradually cease. So that's really important, that pastoral care of that community uh, remains in, in place and that that connection with St Augustine's is once more honed. And in fact, historically, that's where St Mungo's came from. It came out of St Augustine's church plant, as it were, in Dumbarton. Well, it's now, it's now going back um, to, to its mother church, as it were. I do a few other things in the diocese and province, but a main role has been the uh, Mother's Union diocese and chaplain. Primarily at the moment, done through Zoom, I suspect the next 12 months I might be able to visit other MU groups in the diocese. I would say that these last few months have been a good insight into the workings of the MU. And as I suspected, not knowing very much about in the past really, uh, they do a considerable amount of good work for those on the margins. Returning to our own congregation, I'm very aware that there are many people I haven't mentioned who do a whole power of work. With COVID, I think it's only right that I mention Sheila Baker, who's been relentlessly working the phone through most of this year. A really tremendous job looking out for people and reporting back to me with those in particular need. That has been invaluable during the crisis. But Sheila contacts me, I can then act on it. Thank you, Sheila, and to all the others who have really got out of their way to help those with shopping, etc. And that still goes on. People are still getting messages done for them, chapping on door, and, 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 and so on. It's, it's been tremendous, and quite a lot of stuff I simply don't know about, which just goes on underneath the surface there, uh, which is a great tribute to this congregation. As I always do, I'd like to end with acknowledging my heartfelt thanks to Anna, 
who just carries on behind the scenes, making a considerable difference, oiling the cogs of our community. There have undoubtedly been some frustrations this year, not least with the Drumfork Centre and all that we had planned with Eco Baby. Thanks to our earlier advertising, people knew about our service and our contact details which enabled Anna and I to distribute clothing, etc., to needy families even during the pandemic. And we, we just continue to do that. We're grateful for everyone's help in washing and ironing these items. It's a holding game at the moment. It will happen. More than ever, though, your care and natural ability to communicate with people has come into its own. On behalf of St Michael's, thank you for your ministry in 2020. Even with the stress and strain of this year and all the new challenges which has come our way, I can still say with total conviction it has been an absolute pleasure to serve as your rector through this year and there has been many wonderful moments to remember. True God, begotten, not made, of one substance with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Watchful at all times, let us pray for strength to stand with confidence before our Maker and Redeemer. Almighty God, we want to thank you for being with us throughout this liturgical year. Your presence has been in this place from the start to the end. And we want to say thank you. Thank you for the development in our spiritual life and other achievements during the church year. And help us to make a difference in this world for the glory of your name throughout the new ecclesiastical year. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, it is your will that all nations should live in harmony and understanding with one another. We ask you to look mercifully upon the world of our day and heal the sorrows and sufferings of all mankind. Save the nations from the lust for power, from racial hatred, and jealousy, and from the worship of material things. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray today for your church, carrying the gospel of forgiveness and freedom which is needed so much in our world. We thank you for those with a gift for sharing this good news in preaching and teaching the message of your salvation. And we give you thanks for those with the gift for sharing this good news 
through the way in which they live their lives. Give us the courage and willingness to be your witnesses in ways that are generous and respectful and which come from the overflow of our love and delight in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our local church community and ask that you grant us the vision to be a truly spiritual family, a household of faith, where are all welcomed and nourished. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Helen Gibson asked us to pray for Gwen Davis, who is ill, in pain, and who is in her last few days in North Wales. We bring Gwen to you in confidence that your love and her, her every your needs, uh, that you promise uh, to believers is still the same today. Bless all that is being done for her and answer our prayers as you see best. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Likewise, we were asked to pray for Helga Duncan, Mark Duncan's mom, who is seriously ill in Northumberland. We humbly beseech you to behold, visit, and relieve your sick servant Helga, from whom our prayers are desired. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for Mary Bannister, who had a fall during uh, Thursday night and has been taken by ambulance to the Royal Alexandra Hospital. Now she is back home. Loving God, be with Mary, and may your love and peace strengthen and help her at this traumatic time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for Anthony Perkins from the Hans family, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To Anthony, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon him in the eternal life through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for recently deceased Elizabeth Gregory from Helen Gibson's family and Wales. Elizabeth deeply believed that she is going home to heaven. Lord, we ask you, grant her the joys of heaven, which you promise to your believers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, let us make our private prayers to God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for the, the sake, sake of, of your Son, Son our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Come to the lighting of our Advent wreath. You remember last week, Advent 1, you remember particularly Abraham, the outstanding patriarch. Advent 2, you remember the prophets in Advent, 
uh, key prophet we focus on is, of course, Isaiah. A prayer for Advent 2, and then Andrew is going to play two verses of O Little Town of Bethlehem. Let us pray. God our Father, you spoke to the prophets of old of a Saviour who would bring peace. You help them to spread the joyful message of his coming kingdom. Help us, as we prepare to celebrate his birth, to share with those around us the good news of your power and love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. Abel, would you please stand? The tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. We meet in Christ's name. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become the cup of our salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. The worship and praise belong to you, God our Maker. Out of nothing you called all worlds to be, and still you draw the universe to its fulfilment. Dawn and evening celebrate your glory, till time shall be no more. In Christ, your Son, the life of heaven and earth were joined, sealing the promise of a new creation, given yet still to come. Taught by your Spirit, we who bear your threefold likeness look for the city of peace, in whose light we are transfigured and the earth transformed. As children of your redeeming purpose, who await the coming of your Son, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, saying the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory of thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father. In Jesus you showed us yourself. Our hope is built on him, the first, the last, the living one. Obedient even to accepting death, he opened the gate of glory and caused us now to share the life of heaven. Before he's given up to suffering and death, a light with the vision of a feast that heralded a kingdom yet to come. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup, he offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that, overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son. And we may be kindled with the fire of your love, and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptised into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. Creator of all, we have gathered many grains and made them into this one bread. We look for your church to be gathered from the ends of the earth into the kingdom. Let us pray together for fulfilment of God's kingdom here on earth. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Christ is the bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, give us this bread forever. Rise up, Jerusalem, stand on the heights, and see the joy that is coming to you from God. Let us pray. We pray together. Faithful God, we thank you for feeding us with this heavenly banquet. Help us always to hear the prophet's call to turn our hearts to you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. So the announcements this morning will be from Nick as our vestry secretary. Morning, everybody. Can you hear me at the back? It's quite hard in this time of COVID-19 to find any good news, but I've got some. In normal times, you would have all had your Sunday lunch messed up because you'd have felt morally obliged to attend the AGM. We can't do that. So um, what the vestry decided to do instead of an AGM is to promulgate all the information both on the website and at the back of the church. And so I hope that all those that are interested have studied that information. What I'm now going to do is give you a two minute summary of uh, all the key issues and that's the AGM ticked off and we can go and enjoy our Sunday lunch. Right, um, AGMs uh, by constitution have to um, make uh, four policy uh, decisions. Uh, the first one is election of vestry members. Um, we have two vestry members standing down, as Dom has already said, David Ranald and uh, Jane Davis. Um, we have two volunteers duly um, proposed and seconded, and that is um, Beth McLeod and Sammy Harris. So that's the vestry scene too, and uh, thanks to um, all those, th those two who have volunteered and to those two who have stood down. So that's the first thing, election of vestry members. Second thing that the um, AGM has to do is to um, elect the diocesan rep and the standby um, diocesan rep, and actually we're supposed to have a second standby diocesan rep as well. So um, Richard Horrell um, has um, continued to volunteer as the diocesan rep, and he is proposed and seconded duly. Um, Richard Smith is the uh, standby diocesan rep, volunteered to continue, also proposed and seconded, so that's uh, sorted. And Margaret Wardill has very kindly volunteered to be the standby, standby diocesan rep, also proposed and seconded. So that's all sorted, diocesan rep ticked off. Two other things we have to do. The um, presentation of the trustees annual report and the accounts. 
Those have been um, available on the website now for several weeks. Um, I had 50 copies printed and I left them at the back of the church. There are now um, 15 left, so that means that um, there's been quite a good take up. So I will leave the remaining 15 copies there at the back of the church if anybody um, wants to take one away uh, and read it. But um, I regard the uh, trustees' annual report and accounts as duly received by the congregation. So that's the third thing. And the final thing that the uh, AGM has to do is to approve the auditor. Um, the treasurer is delighted with the service that we've had from um, Caroline Kerr, who has been the auditor this year. Um, the relationship between the treasurer and the auditor has worked well. And so the proposal is that we continue with Caroline Kerr. Um, and I've heard no objections to that, so we'll consider that decided as well. So that's the four things that the AGM has to do. Um, all sorted, well done, excellent. Um, I will summarize all of this um, in a, a set of um, minutes, which I will make available on the website and on the notice board at the back of the church. And that concludes the AGM for 2020. Thank you very much. Nick, best AGM I've ever attended. Thank you very much. <laughs> you will please stand and bow your heads. Now may Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and your loved ones this Advent and forevermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.